Um, Michael, we're going to try again. I've got your presentation. Maybe it's going to take time to load, but um, are you here, by the way? Can't hear you. Michael Turner. Michael Eugene Turner. All right. Okay, Thanks, so I guess I have, I have to cue you for uh, flipping the slides. Yeah, uh, or you can do it yourself, look. It's, it's okay. easy. Below the image, you have uh, arrows left and right. Okay, tell yeah. me when to start. Yeah, okay. Uh, so for Michael, you want to do it like two minutes, two minutes? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll see how far I get in two minutes, and then okay, um, okay. But I'll stop you at four. So uh, when right. you see me reappearing, it means it's the end, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. See you soon. Uh, you have four minutes. Do whatever you want. You can ask for feedback during the four minutes. It's your four minutes. Okay. Uh, now I can go. Okay. So uh, I'm coming in from Tokyo, where it's about my bedtime. So I'll be uh, giving a talk in my sleep. We'll see how it goes. Uh, OK, uh, maybe everyone knows what the Kicksat mission was. Um, here's the actual development kit that students would use in their projects for the STEM education agenda I'm talking about. The, um, there's a little bit of history here. It started at Cornell and under a, an amazing professor there. but. In some ways, an even more amazing satellite developer. Uh, this guy did it almost single-handedly. He uh, it kind of got overhyped, but you know, at least it got launched. Uh, failed, unfortunately. Years later, there was a Kicksat two, and that one took years to get up into space again. And uh, but. Uh, finally, there was at least a, a partial success. The uh, this is a 3U CubeSat, so uh, you can all well, you're all CubeSat people. You can see the relative scale here. The um, there have been some space mission proposals for these, but nothing has really happened yet at the chipset level. It's, I think something can happen at the STEM education level, uh, partly because these things are so small, so cheap. I like to say intimate because uh, I mean you can you can take a temperature reading off of it, you know off your hand, okay, and uh, somewhat hackable. The uh, the PC board layout is fairly simple, and there's some potential for expansion as well. Um, and then you know why space? Well, space is a very different environment, as we all know, and some things like kinematics, dynamics are fairly pure. And uh, this helps demonstrate, I think, some important concepts. Now, I talk about STEM education for the developing world. Uh, I think there are a lot of big problems there that satellites help solve or at least monitor. And I believe a lot of these nations need their own capacity for it, or at the very least, uh, understand what it is that the kinds of benefits that they're getting. And I think actually working with the hardware at the student level is a good approach to that. Uh, we all know that testing is a really important part of that because you can't fix stuff once it's up there. And uh, you can also teach physical principles and technology in general that way. There's, um, I have a lot of various ideas for how you could make some of these testing things cheap. I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but you can get some general impressions here. The uh, but you know, the basic thing is is that space is taught to kids kind of from a spectator level. It's like something other people do. Astronauts go up. Other people launch stuff. Other people build stuff. Uh, but you know, this isn't a satellite that they can work with themselves and uh, at fairly low cost get launched themselves. If Kicksat three or something like it, what I call Mindesat one, uh, is made possible somehow. Um, I, you should cut me off at some point, but there's a political dimension to all this, which is that even within the underrepresented developing nations, there are underrepresented areas within them. 
uh, and the place I go to, it's a post-conflict zone. People there have been pushed down for centuries. And this is a way for them to be both part of a nation, but also have a lot of their own regional pride. And uh, the students I've met there, even in the post-conflict zone with all its problems, are fantastic, uh, very inspiring to me. So this is one reason I go <laughs> into places where there's still martial law, because uh, that's where the opportunities for real change are. So um, that's pretty much my pitch. Uh, and I'd like to know what, from that really fast talk, what kinds of questions have come up for some of you? Uh, how would you like to be involved, especially at the CubeSat level? Because I, I have to concentrate at the education level for something this small and simple. All right, so that's- Yeah, thank you, Michael. Thank you. If you have something to say to Michael, say it right now. You have, uh, you have 30 seconds. Anyone? I'm listening. Anyway, you know where is Michael? Michael, you have uh, you have a slide with your contacts. Your first slide. Join the break for for discussions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely. So, Michael, yeah, it's it's very nice. Nice you bringing education like in uh, for space in the Philippines. For Michael, please a yes. You have three seconds to unmute and say a big yes to Michael. Three, two, one. Yes. 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 Thank, thank so, you. <laughs>